Good morning, Mr. Gupta. It's uh, our honor and pleasure to welcome you on uh, Movers and Shakers by Frost and Sullivan. It's a series of interview uh, where we interview the industry leaders, the thought leaders, and uh, pick on their brains on ongoing issues, on industry trends, and several other uh, industry-related uh, issues that we can talk about. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the whole COVID and its impact on automotive industry, mobility industry. COVID uh, is like, it's, it's like a storm to stay, say the least. I think it's, uh, it has clearly thrown all our plans out of the window. They are completely off the toss. And probably the best way to ride the storm is to make sure that at your ship that you're sailing is great and it's, it's healthy. So probably that's why you have must have started with Nissan next. We read a lot about it, but it would be nice if you could share with our viewers, uh, what is Nissan next program? What to expect? Uh, what are the main um, idea behind the program and what to expect in the next four or five years? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vivek. So at first, um, COVID uh, pandemic is unprecedented, unparalleled crisis we have seen in our living life. Uh, obviously, this has made a lot of impact on the way we work, the way we live, the way we travel, the way we manufacture cars, the way we sell the cars, and so on. Now, what do we believe that this pandemic has also given us opportunity to relook into our processes and the behaviors. And some of the behaviors will become normal. And then the business has to be aligned with the new normal. And that is driven by the agility of the organization. So when we launch Nissan Next, of course, we announced in May, but we started working since last December. To start with, what is Nissan Next? Nissan Next is a radical transformation plan focusing on product, technology, and markets. Now, how we build this transformation plan is based on only two pillars. One is rationalization, and second is growth. Now, the cushion is rationalization. This is not a brainer because we have to cut something. But growth for sure needs many things, many enablers, many catalysts to grow. When it comes to rationalization, cut is very simple, but how to do the cut is most important because this is something which links uh, to the growth. And that's what we did is to focus on core product, core market, and core technology to rationalize and start growing. Now, the financial announcements which we did on quarter two, 2020, we are absolutely on track on the rationalization, which means aligning our organization in line with 5.4 million capacity and capability, whether it comes to product, whether it comes to technology. Then when it comes to core market, we are growing in China, in United States, in Japan, sure. When you talk about technology, we could launch our e-power, which is electrified technology and ProPilot, which is autonomous driving technology and so on. And when it comes to the growth for the future, we could launch six all new models in first half of this year. And we are going to launch the remaining six in, 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 in few months, which was possible only during uh, the COVID pandemic, which means it impacted us, but also it empowered us to do the things in a different way. And we do believe uh, that um, uh, we, we are absolutely on track uh, for the Nissan Next in, uh, in, in, and we will deliver what needs to be delivered in the near future. Fantastic. I think Frost and Sullivan is focused on growth and I'm very happy to hear that you are also looking at growth as one of the important pillars. I think that's very heartening. So one of the differentiated strategies Nissan has as compared to your competitors is your focus on electrification. And uh, with COVID, uh, with oil prices uh, at all time low, uh, with the governments uh, probably uh, focusing their incentives on something else. Uh, so it's a bit of a uh, storm within a storm kind of a situation for electrification. 
So how do you see uh, electrification as a strategy panning out uh, in short term and in long term? You know, electrification should be should not be the objective. And that's a mistake many people do when they start saying that I want to launch an electric, electrified car. When we launched to, in 2010, our first EV, LEAF, we, didn't, we were not asked by the government. We were not asked by the customer. We were not asked by the competitor. We launched EV just as a part of our innovation and put the technology on the road. That's it. And at that time, uh, and even today, if we go, if we if we start fixing that program by business case, we will never succeed. So we we we, we did not consider that. And then when we launched the second leaf, we we more focused on human centric technologies, and we wanted to provide to customer much more than uh, autonomy anxiety. So first leaf, of course, customers had the autonomous anxiety, which was not the case in second leaf. And now when we know that customer is totally away from the autono uh, autonomy uh, anxiety, which is whether this car will do 80 or 90 or 100, because we have passed those limits. We are talking about 300, 400 kilometers to a single charge, which a normal customer do not drive every day. So now yeah. the question is what customer is asking for. Customer is asking for much more than EV, which is not only autonomy, which is about the safety, which is about the confidence with autonomous driving features, which is about the connected to connect to the society and so on. So in, in Nissan views and my view as a, as a, as a business, uh, business automotive leader, I believe electrification is one of the enabler to Yeah, well said. Uh, so uh, when we are riding this talk, what would be your message to your partners, business partners, customers, or new mobility players? We also see a lot of influx of uh, new players who want to enter this mobility value chain. So what would be your uh, key message for all these market participants? I think at first to start with, uh, uh, the pandemic normal will become a new normal. How we as an organization should be agile enough to align our capacity and capability in line with this new normal. For example, Nissan launched the biggest digital platform uh, shop at home uh, and 11.5% of our first half of this year's sales uh, used online actions. Uh, number three is uh, moving forward. Uh, pandemic has also taught us that it's not important to be connected every time by travel. But if we need to connect the dots around the world, there are many ways in addition to travel to connect those dots. And moving forward, these advanced technologies will reshape the future of the mobility. So on one side, the customer will have a new normal behavior. On other side, we have uh, innovative technologies which are going to support uh, uh, the shaping of the mobility which will define and 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 deliver uh, as per the new customer aspiration yeah so it's widely believed that uh, the entire uh, covid has uh, undergoing a k shaped recovery so some uh, some industry segments are actually going up and some industry segments are going down. Uh, and you see that in almost every field, you know, IT stocks are going up and oil stocks are going down. So similarly, even within mobility, do you, you highlighted uh, some things like uh, digital retailing that's going up, uh, connectivity that's going up. Are there any parts of your business which you're not so bullish on? Yeah, I mean, it's question of how you look at it. And for sure, we don't have to link share market with the, with the daily operations. Um, and, and the question is what value you're creating. So uh, I would say post pandemic, uh, there is a way to create the value. Uh, you know, when we launch the digital platform, it creates the value for our IT, IS and marketing and so many people around the world. So my view is instead of looking this crisis 
uh, as um, as uh, um, as something which is negatively impacting it, we should see this crisis as an as a disruption, which is giving us an opportunity to innovate in a new way. And the world is not still out of uh, this pandemic. Let's be let's be very careful on that. And that's where Nissan. Uh, if you ask me if we have to give the message, and I always say that, still, people's safety is first, and and for, for Nissan, the cash security is second. Keeping the people's safety and the cash security, how well we can innovate the things to justify and grow in the new normal. That's the, mo that's the most important point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. It was wonderful talking to you. I'm sure we'll find your views and our viewers will find your views very insightful. And I thank on behalf of Frost and Sullivan, thank you once again for allowing us to interview. Thank you so much. Thank you.